Come, a passionate speech. Uh, what speech? <laughs> Good Lord. I heard thee speak me a speech once, but it was never acted, or if it was, not above once. For the play I remember, please not the million. It was a caviare to the general. But it was as I received it, and others whose judgments in such matters cried in the top of mine, an excellent play, well digested in the scenes, set down with as much modesty as cunning, I remember one said there were no salads in the lines to make the matter savoury, nor no matter in the phrase that might indict the author of affectation, but called it an honest method, as wholesome as sweet, and by very much more handsome than fine. One speech in it I chiefly loved. "'Twas Aeneas' tale to Dido, and thereabout of it, especially where he speaks of Priam's slaughter. Ah. Here, if it live in your memory, begin at this line. Let me see... Uh, let me see. Uh, the, the rugged Pyrrhus, like the Hyrcanian beast. Uh, it, it is not so. It, it begins with Pyrrhus. Uh, the rugged Pyrrhus, he whose sable arms, black as his purpose, did the knight resemble when he lay couched in the ominous horse, that now this dread and black complexion smeared with heraldry more dismal. Head to foot now is he total ghouls, Horridly tricked with blood of fathers, mothers, daughters, sons, baked and impasted with the parching streets that lend a tyrannous and damned light to their vile murders, roasted in wrath and fire, and thus orsized with coagulate gore, with eyes like carbuncles, the hellish pyrrhus, old grandsire Priam seeks. <laughs> so. Proceed you. For God, my lord, well spoken and with good accent and good discretion. Anon he finds him, striking too short at Greeks. His antique sword, rebellious to his arms, lies where it falls, repugnant to command. Unequal matched, Pyrrhus at Priam drives, in rage strikes wide, but with the whiff and wind of his fell sword, the unnerved father falls. Then senseless Ilium, seeming to feel this blow with flaming top, stoops to his base and with a hideous crash takes prisoner Pyrrhus' ear. For lo, his sword, which was declining on the milky head of reverend Priam, seemed in the air to stick. So, as a painted tyrant, Pyrrhus stood, and like a neutral to his will and matter, did nothing. But as we often see against some storm, a silence in the heavens, the rack stands still, the bold wind speechless, and the orb below as hush as death, and on the dreadful thunder doth rend the region. So, after Pyrrhus' pause, a roused vengeance slits him new a work, and never did the Cyclops' hammers fall on Mars, his armour, forged for proof he turned with less remorse than Pyrrhus' bleeding sword now falls on Priam. Out, out, thou trumpet fortune, all you gods in general synod, take away her power, break all the spokes and fellies from her wheel, and bowl the round knave down the hill of heaven, as low as to the fiend. This is too long. It shall to the barbers with your beard. Uh, prithee, say on. He's for a jig or a tale of bawdry, or he sleeps. Say on. Come to Hecuba. But who? Oh, who had seen the Mobled Queen? The Mobled Queen. That's good. Mobled Queen is good. Run barefoot up and down, threatening the flames with bison room. A clout upon that head where late the diadem stood, and for a robe about her lank and all o'er timid loins, a blanket in the alarm of fear caught up. Who this had seen, with tongue in venom steeped against fortune's state, would treason have pronounced. But if the gods themselves did see her then, when she saw Pyrrhus make malicious sport in mincing with his sword, her husband's limbs, the instant burst of clamour that she made, unless things mortal moved them not at all, would have made milch the burning eyes of heaven and passion in the gods. <laughs> Look where he has not turned his colour and his tears in his eyes. 
pray you no more. Tis well. I'll have thee speak out the rest soon. Good my lord, will you see the players well bestowed? Do you hear? Let them be well used, for they are the abstracts and brief chronicles of the time. <laughs> After your death, you were better have a bad epitaph than their ill report while you live. My lord, I will use them according to their desert. God's bodkin, man, much better. Use every man after his desert, and who shall scape whipping? <laughs>